In this video, I'm going to show you how to host a free static website with Google Firebase. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, a lot of people, they hear the word free. They're like, what, what's the catch? And there are a couple catches here. Let's go to firebase.google.com, click on pricing up here. And we're going to look at the no cost version, see what kind of limitations it has. So it's called the Spark Plan. Um, it says generous limits to get started. What we're specifically interested in are the limits for the hosting. So what you get for free is 10 gigabytes of storage, data transfer, 360 megabytes per day. So let's just assume that your web page is one megabyte. You have a lot of pictures on it. That means 360 people can go to your website every day. Um, I'm not saying that this should be a website for your business or something, but it's a great website to just get started with web hosting on Firebase. You get a custom domain in SSL for free and you can have multiple sites per project. So that's great. We're gonna start by configuring our, our project within the user interface and then we're gonna finish up on the command line because that's where the power of Firebase uh, really comes through on the command line. So let's start that and create our project in here. So we'll click create a project and the project name for me is going to be called, um, let's just call it Fire Tony. <laughs> okay, so uh, we'll accept the terms and conditions for both of these and click continue. And uh, I'm not gonna enable Google Analytics for this project. You can if you want to, uh, but I'll go ahead and create the project and let that do its thing. All right, at this point, your project is ready. So we'll go ahead and click on continue which takes you to your Firebase console dashboard. And at this point, we're gonna switch over to the command line. So let's minimize this. And if you're on a Mac, you can open up a terminal window. If you're on Windows, you can open up a command prompt. And what you're gonna need in either case is something called Node Package Manager or NPM. So I'll have a link on the screen here. Where you can download and install that from nodejs.org. I already have that command installed as you can see here. So once you do have it installed, we can get Firebase tools, we can install Firebase tools on our system with npm install dash g firebase dash tools. So execute that, that'll go ahead and download those packages onto your system and we'll let that do this thing and catch up with you when it finishes. Okay, and that finished up pretty quickly. So now we're gonna use the Firebase command to log into our Google account with Firebase login. So execute that. And what that's gonna ask, do you care if it collects usage and error reporting information? So you can choose yes or no. And what that's gonna do uh, on my other window, it opens up a tab where I can log in to whatever account I wanna associate this Firebase with. So I'm gonna pick this account right here and then scroll down, click on allow. And it says you're logged into the Firebase command line interface. So we can close out of here. And back here we see success logged in as my email. All right, at this point, with all that set up out of the way, we can actually start hosting a website. So I'm gonna to go to my desktop, which is where I'm gonna to choose to host my website out of. You can pick any directory on your system. Uh, that makes sense. And what we're gonna to do to start that is type in Firebase init hosting. So this is going to ask you basically uh, to associate it with a project, project which we only have one project at this point. So you, you can create a new project, um, but I'm gonna use an existing project, just using my arrow keys and the enter key to move around here. And there is the Fire Tony project. So we'll associate our hosting with that. And now where do you want your project to live on your local machine? I went to my desktop and it's gonna create a public folder in here, or you can tell it the name of a, a folder that you want. I'll just say public in here and that'll still create that public uh, directory. So let's do that. Configure as a single page app. No. Set up automatic builds and deploys. We won't do that. And now you can see when that has finished, we have this public folder that was created in this other JSON file that we won't look at too much. Um, let's see what's in here. Inside the public folder, we have an index.html file and a 404 error page. Both of them HTML files. So let's see what that looks like. How do we serve this? Well, before deploying this to a public website, let's test it locally. And we can test it locally with Firebase serve. 
And what that's gonna do is run a local server on your computer, whoops, serve, not server, Firebase serve, I'm sorry. What that's gonna do is run a local server where just I can access it on my local computer. And the way I can access that is at http colon slash slash localhost 5002. So I'm gonna open up a web browser and go to localhost colon 5002. And that's loading the HTML page that we saw. So let's actually prove that that's the case. Let's modify the HTML page in our public directory here to say something else. So let's open that with a text editor. And that does open up over here. I'm gonna get rid of everything in here. And I think, yep, I have some boilerplate HTML code, some basic, uh, just inside of my HTML body, I have one header, one element that says, hello world. So I'm gonna save that to the index.html file. I'll get out of here and we'll get out of here for now. I'll, um, I don't even have to stop the server. It's still serving out of this directory. We'll open up our web browser again refresh the page, and now we see our modifications, which prints out hello world as a header one element. So if we look at the page source here, that matches up with exactly what we told it to serve, which is just those few lines of HTML. Okay, that's awesome. Let's go ahead and deploy our website to the public now. So we'll get out of here, we'll minimize this, we'll do control C to shut down our server, and now instead of doing what we were doing before with Firebase serve, we can do Firebase deploy, and that's gonna deploy it to uh, the public. So we'll execute that, and that's uploading our files to the server. And now you can see that our hosting URL is this one right here, https firebase or firetony.web.app. So I'm gonna copy that, open a new tab, paste it in, and as expected, we see the same exact thing, but this time, instead of being a local website on our computer at localhost, this is publicly available. Anybody can go to this website. The one thing that I did wanna point out here is that Firebase automatically installs an SSL certificate. So that's why you see this lock icon up here, uh, whereas my local website does not have that. So what that means is that the connection between anybody who visits your website and your website is automatically secure and encrypted. So that's a really cool thing. A lot of other web hosts, you have to take an extra step to do that. Uh, but because we are using Firebase, that comes with it for free. The next thing I wanna show you how to do is to take this pretty drab looking website and spice it up a bit with an HTML template. So as long as it's a static website, you can do pretty much anything with it. So let's go ahead and do that. In our public directory, I'm gonna get rid of everything in here since that was just for testing purposes. Um, I have on my desktop this HTML template, which has an index.html file, some images, some assets, and that's all linked up and ready to go. So I'm gonna take the contents of that and simply drag it into my public directory and close out of everything. And just as easy as we did before with the uh, Firebase deploy command, we'll execute that again. What Firebase is gonna do is release a new version of our website to the server. And you can see that happening here. It's uploading all those new files. This time there's 66 files. And now we can go back to the website uh, in a web browser and see the new changes to our website. And actually, yeah. We'll do that, we'll do that. I was gonna say we can do it locally first to test our changes, which is a good practice, but we just went right to the public, that's okay. So we'll load that up, and we don't actually see those changes happen right away, but now we refresh the page, it took a little bit, maybe some caching. Uh, now we do see those changes being applied to our website. So just a, a simple website with a couple links over here, you can scroll down, see a whole bunch of stuff. I just grabbed this um, template off the internet and you can do the same thing for whatever you have in mind for this website that you're building with Firebase. So in this video, I also wanna show you a quick overview of the Firebase dashboard because there's some good stuff over here. So go to your Firebase console and what you can do when you expand the build uh, menu item over here, you can go to the hosting section and kind of see what we were working on on the command line. So. Here is our URL that we are accessing. There's also this other URL. They both point to the same thing. One of them is a web.app domain and one of them is a firebase.app uh, or firebase.com domain. So let's open that one. And that does indeed load the same exact website as the web.app. So 
think of them as copies of each other. You can add a custom domain name to these so you don't have to use the domain names that they provide. Um, I'm not gonna go into that in this video, but it is a pretty straightforward process. Also down here, you can see all of our release history. So the initial deployment that we made and then the one that we, the second one that we did with the HTML template is right here. One last thing I wanna to explain to you is the relationship between Google Firebase and the Google Cloud Platform. So Google Firebase actually runs on top of the Google Cloud Platform. You can think of Firebase as a wrapper around the Google Cloud Platform where you can actually host a website yourself, but it's a lot more technical. Firebase makes it a lot easier for people to get started with hosting on top of the, the Google Cloud Platform. And just to show you that that's the case, I'm gonna open a new tab here and go to console.cloud.google.com. You can do this too. And up here, uh, you can see your different projects. I have another project in here on Google Cloud, but you also can see your Firebase project, which is Fire Tony for me. Um, so like I said, there is the option to host directly a website on the Google Cloud platform. There is free tiers as well. They're less restrictive. There's uh, more generous um, limitations to them. And I actually have a video about that if you wanna set up a WordPress website with a database, a dynamic website on the Google Cloud platform, you can check that out over here next.